Welcome, friends. Welcome, dragoons. The time has come to continue the journey. It's viewer choice night. Let's all get cozy. Let's enjoy some cinematics picked by the community legends. The dragoons. Ah. Welcome everybody, welcome back to the show, it's great to be here, I hope you're all having a lovely, lovely day, and here we are, it's been a minute since we did viewer choice, really excited since uh, before Japan, so we're going to have a nice night, we're going to be watching a lot of stuff, and uh, I think it's going to be fantastic, I think it's going to be lovely, <clears throat> yes, so join us friends, um, we got some good stuff to cover, let me say hi to everybody in chat, Hello, BJ Honeycut, my Mora baked hot dog. Shay, how are you guys doing tonight? Aliyah's here, Night of Sarcasm. Hey, Night of Sarcasm, I think we're starting with your video tonight on Viewer Choice, so get ready for that. Uh, hello, Angela. Hello, baked hot dog. Hello, the proud. It's good to have you guys here. It's going to be a juicy night. It's going to be a juicy night. Finally back again. Yeah, it's great. Listen, I was in Japan for a couple weeks, if you guys didn't know. Um, I did do one stream playing Warcraft when I got back uh, a few days ago. And we've been traveling a lot and stuff, but we are here. We also had PAX East right after Japan. It was an absolute last. Saw a lot of our friends over there. It was really fun. And Aliyah was working with Quantic Dream, absolute legends. So I was there with her. It was really, really fun. What's up, Jerry? How you doing? What's up, Scott? Good to see you, man. Hope you're feeling good. Uh, but it was a it was a once in a lifetime trip. Absolutely amazing trip to Japan. We were living the dream. Um, lots and lots of traveling. We got some vlogs on the way. There's actually one vlog already up on Aaliyah's channel on her YouTube, so make sure to check that out. We got some more on the way. Yeah. It's going to be good. Long time no see. Yeah, it's good to see you, Jerry. We're starting with sarcasm tonight. Yeah, it's going to be great. So if you guys are new to viewer choice, our dragoons are our, uh, our members on YouTube. Our second tier of membership. Oh, I should say our third tier of membership on YouTube. But it's the point in which you can choose a video for me to react to literally choose the content for the channel and it's also our tier two subs on twitch are also dragoons you can connect your discord account to youtube and twitch get an exclusive chat it's a lot of fun and uh i'm really i'm really excited big hot dog checking in from twitch <laughs> thank you say so it's gonna be a fun night we haven't done one of these in a while and we haven't done a solo viewer choice in a while i think we usually put them at the end of warcraft so i'm excited to have a chilled out night catch up with you guys watch everybody's videos it's gonna be good um, and I want, I want to try, like I said, I want to try and change my schedule up a little bit. Um, you know, I would love to do viewer choice more often. So we don't feel like we have to do this kind of like massive marathon thing. And, and we can kind of just have a chill out session like this and enjoy them. So that's going to be the plan. Yes, I seem a little quiet. Here, I'll raise, I'll raise myself up. Is that a little better? Got the wow music playing too, so that should be good. Thanks for the follow, Pixie. Look at that Roche on the screen. Absolute legend. Uh, we also got more Rebirth on the way. I'm going to be breaking down a lot of the scenes in Rebirth. I had some thoughts about it. I was like, man, you know, this is like a 100-plus hour game. Um, it's really hard to edit a 100-plus hour game for a, a, a channel where I'm known for breaking down the cinematics. So, And a lot of it is just gameplay and side quests. And so, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up um, kind of focusing uh, on, you know, the big moments and the big scenes. And I will likely be streaming those and then kind of focusing on breaking those down like we do with our normal videos. So that'll be really fun. Can't wait. Uh, for thousands of years, I lay dormant. Hello, Sora. Good to see you. <laughs> that's better. Yeah, I raised myself up. Hopefully, that's a little bit better. Welcome, Sora. It's good to see you. And welcome, Roa, to the stream. But yeah, this should be fun. Um, again, if you're new, it's a it's a fun night. You know, we get to watch a variety of stuff. I know there's Warcraft tonight. Scott! Oh, my goodness. Scott! We've been visited upon by the Goron! <laughs> yes! There you go. It finally showed up on Twitch that you were streaming here. I like Twitch better. It's good to see you. Thank you so much, Scott. Aliyah's here too. She's 
ensnared in the blanket of the beanbag. But uh, Scott, how you doing? Thank you so much for the thousand bits. He has brought us the Goron, a true blessing this day. Thank you for supporting the Philidari. I appreciate you so much. And with that, we have, oh my goodness gracious. We have a new Dragoon. Honor Spren, thank you so much for bringing your Stormlight to us this day. We knight you as one of the Dragoons, our most powerful warriors. Now rise and claim your place in our number. Woo! Thank you so much for that. Honor Spren, I appreciate it. And Scott, you know what? Thank you. Thank you for that, Scott. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's been so long. How have we been? Oh, we've been so good, man. I was saying on our other stream, like, we could do a full stream just telling stories from Japan. It was so much fun, man. Like, there's so many great stories. Maybe we will at some point. Honest Bren, thank you so much for becoming a Dragoon. Let's see the Dragoon spears or helmets in the chat. Honest Bren, let us know what you want to watch. That would be your choice. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, thank you for those Dragoon emotes, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have you played Baldur's Gate 3 yet? I played a little bit with Aaliyah. Absolutely love it. We're going to play more. We, we were just saying in Japan. I was like, we got to play more. And we ended up seeing uh, at PAX East, a lot of cool cosplayers. And it was reminding me of Aaliyah's cosplay. And I'm like, we got to play more. We really do. So that's going to be good. Sword, sword, sword. <laughs> uh, not sure how to do it on Twitch. Fear not. Your time will come. But yes, yeah, good stuff. We'll start in just a second. Let's get these uh, viewer choice on the roll. Thank you guys for the support tonight. Um, but yeah, Japan was sick. Um, it was an absolutely amazing trip. Thanks for the follow, PP. It was very good. Um, but yeah, what else? I mean, there's just so many stories. I don't even know where to start. I, I've got a million pictures. Um, I'm going to be posting more to Instagram. Uh, vlogs coming to YouTube. Content all over the place. Get ready for it. It's going to be great. But we had such a good time, man. Japan. Been wanting to go my whole life. And to finally be there was quite surreal, I will say. We got to go to the Square Enix Cafe. We got a bunch of stuff from there. Oh, man, it was good. It was really good. I hope you guys have been catching the uh, the voice acting content, too, <laughs> over on Twitter. Um, Aaliyah summoned me once again uh, for Ocarina of Time. We had a blast. So, it's been very fun. Yes, Angela with the Dragoons. Sounds outstanding. Ah, it was so good. Rick, it was so good. You need an announcement photo album for Discord? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Did anything scary happen in Japan? Uh, not really, Scott. No, it was it was a great trip. Yeah, Japan was was very 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 nice to us, very kind to us. Uh, the scariest thing I would say is it was a little bit hard to get uh, food without meat, so we don't eat meat. Uh, that was probably the, the scariest thing. <laughs> Felt we ended up finding like honestly the best vegetarian food I've ever had. So it was amazing. But um, yeah. Just a blast. The scary part was actually going to Boston for PAX East after. Because that was crazy. After being in Japan. It was like, oh, that's right. We're savages, essentially. <laughs> Saw a picture of you posing next to some anime statue. It was funny. Oh, yeah. That, it could have been Mewtwo in the Pokemon Center. That was fun. Uh, I heard they treat people really well. Oh, yeah. It was it was exceptionally well that they treated us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing but kindness. The scariest thing I hear about Japan is the sheer size of Tokyo is intimidating. It is quite big. Um, there's a lot of different districts and stuff. But we ended up, uh, you know, spending time in the places we wanted to. And we ended up getting down to Osaka, Kyoto, just all over the place. And it was... You, you, you know, you could go back for years and probably never see everything, right? So one section of Tokyo that's astonishing in size. It, it all was, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, it was really good. But no, everybody was kind. Everything was amazing. Um, incredible, incredible just welcoming feeling never got any weird vibes or anything like that it was good it was very good you described my dream trip ah just do it japan calls to me don't know if i'll ever get to go i would say life is short make it happen you know figure it out quick did you go to the bathhouse no i didn't no universal studios uh no not in japan we did go to tokyo disney though and that was really awesome yeah, Tokyo Disney was really special. We got rained out completely and ended up turning my shoes into a biohazard. Um, but I did, I did seal them away. And this is, you can hear the laughter from Leah. I did seal my shoes away forever. 
in this like I compressed them in a in a vacuum sealed bag inside another bag so they're completely flat my shoes are like this this is vertically how big they are now I can show it to you I'll, I'll get the shoes but yeah you won't believe it I sealed the shoes away forever and I was like it became a meme I was just like I need to try and save the shoes and Aaliyah's like why destroy the shoes they're not even that expensive they're just like some shoes you had I'm like no no no, no. I gotta try and save these, but they've been now brewing inside this thing with the with the Disney, the Tokyo Disney rainwater soaked into them. Um, there was like this much standing water inside my shoes, just, just sloshing around. It was crazy. So I'm like, man, I wonder if it's gonna create like the next Resident Evil, like like Resident Evil eight or nine is gonna come. Isildur, destroy it! <laughs> and I was like, this is what does it. No. It was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, so that's what we got. We got the shoes, and they're still here, and I haven't unsealed them yet. And the funny thing is, I kept trying to ask people. I was like, where can I get the shoes clean? So in Boston, I was even like, <laughs> it rained a little bit yesterday. You think I could uh, get the shoes clean? They're like, we do not clean shoes. And I was like, okay. I don't know why you're talking like that in Boston, but okay. And it was just so strange to me that I couldn't clean them. So I ended up carting them back to the elven realm where we are now and I'm like man I wonder if we can clean them so we'll see maybe one day I'll unseal them on stream so that at least if it starts the next Resident Evil like biohazard explosion or whatever you guys will see it save the world holy cow what happened why did we come up by <laughs> it's just it's just like have you ever run like cross country in the mud all day and had your shoes on for like 10 hours that is just that's just what happens what's up ogre how you doing it's a petri dish for mold and other things. you know get get like a towel wet and and leave it somewhere where you know where it's moist it gets mold and everything right it's the same thing uh maybe a cobbler yeah <laughs> roa how you doing ogre that's one of our ogres or i should say our ogre our only ogre in the philidari uh philidari coming up we're playing wow very soon seven uh i was in japan so i couldn't obviously play anything uh i played wow just the other day though and we'll be back to it yes one day they're going to come alive and attack you there. <laughs> the shoes. <laughs> yeah, luckily I have Aaliyah. She's got lots of swords. I've got swords. We'll be all right. Yeah. Walk a bunch of cow poop at the farm when I was little. That's awesome. That's awesome. A billion cats. How you doing? Welcome. So good to see all these names that I know so well. Anyways, we're going to get rolling with Knight of Sarcasm's Choice in just a second. So many good stories in Japan, though. Yeah. Um... Uh, Doing good. I was actually wondering if you got the second round dragoon suggested. We we are like a couple away, Ogre. Yeah, we had a couple like new dragoons recently, so I'm doing those. It's their first, and then yeah, round two dragoon is is definitely happening tonight. I'm like, I think I'm like two or three away from it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're getting to it tonight. Your thoughts on Epic Universe in Orlando, Florida? I don't know what that is, Roa. I don't know what that is. I don't. I don't know. Sounds cool though. Sounds epic. Hot dog, I'm going to hurt you. Wait, what did I miss? <laughs> the heck did I miss? Anyways, this is going to be great. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Japan is great. You guys should all go. Had a great time with some friends there too that we know from back in the day. And we were able to uh, see them and kind of get a different look at Japan. You know, a, a look at Japan that we wouldn't have had as purely um, just going around to big tourist spots, which was amazing as it is. But bucket list. Yeah. No, it's 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 really special. It's really special. I'll just think of something to submit to them. Yeah, Jerry. Get those up. Like I said, don't forget, if you're a tier two, if you happen to be a tier two sub on Twitch, you are a dragoon. You are in the dragoon. Same as the uh, same as the dragoons on YouTube. Did you see Mount Fuji? I did see Mount Fuji. It was crazy. It was so cool. We like it was right out the window of our train. It was amazing. We have three, yeah, three left on the first round, and then we're into unknown territory here. New Universal Studios uh, that has new theme parks like How You Train the Dragon, uh, How You Train Your Dragon. That's really fun. I like that. Did you get to ride in Rickshaw, the two-seater pulled by people to the toy area? No, I don't believe so, Scott. That sounds crazy. Oh, I see. It's a new place in Universal, Roa. Yeah, that sounds cool. Very good. Very good indeed. But yeah, man, it's been good. Um, but like, you know, we've been back for a couple days, as as you saw on the Warcraft stream. And it was a lot of traveling, man. It was two or three weeks of nonstop travel. So we're just, you know, we're laying low for a couple days, which you can't blame us. But um, Ali has been having some great streams. I've been, I've been working on it, too. So 
Very exciting. Yeah, what do you say? Why don't we uh why don't we get into it? We'll start the viewer choice with Night of Sarcasm. I believe it's a World of Warcraft video, which is very exciting. And uh we're gonna we're gonna get to it. How long is the flight? Very long, but it was actually a really good flight. Enjoyed it. Uh Thunder's coming. Indeed. And yeah, listen, later this year we got uh actual new World of Warcraft too. And what's exciting for me is of course I get to play with you guys. That's gonna be sick. In the Philidari, but also new cinematics. As I said before, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be there with you guys now on the front lines as we get these cinematics. It's gonna be a little bit different than uh, than the stuff we were doing, where it's like I'm watching cinematics from 20 years ago, you know. So you would suggest a StarCraft two uh, cinematic or two, but I'm still hoping you do a whole StarCraft journey. Yeah, I'm not opposed to a StarCraft journey. Um, is it really robust like that, Ogre? Would it really be a full journey, like several streams? I was thinking about that. I was like, man. You know, obviously with Warcraft, there's no more cinematic, so I can't continue the cinematic journey at this time till they release new ones. So we play the game, you know. But I was like, I wonder if I should do other games kind of like cinematic journeys. I just don't know. Honestly, it was long enough to do that. Not as big as WoW. Okay. You love the sound of a storm outside? Yeah, me too. Took you eight hours to fly to Cali from Ohio. Oh, is that what you're saying, Sora? That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't too long, but it was, you know, it was a pleasant flight. I really enjoyed it. Not nearly as big. Do you do stuff from FF14 already? Yeah, Honor Spren. Um, I did do some stuff from FF14. I've reacted to all the, um, the major, you know, CG cinematics. And I've played FF14 a very, very long time ago. I will be playing again, though, um, this year. It's going to be fun. Shorter but iconic cinematics. So CC, hey, I'm in. That'll be fun. That'll be really fun. Indeed. Is that Shrek? How you doing, Mozzie? <laughs> Is that Shrek in the chat? Wicked. Are you having fun playing WoW? Yes, I'm having fun playing WoW. Um, I feel like a noob, um, of course, but I'm, uh, which I am, but I'm doing pretty good. I'm at like level donkey. What is it? Level 35 or something like that? Yeah. Have I checked out Plunderstorm? I did, uh, last stream. Yeah, check last stream VOD for Warcraft. I played Plunderstorm with uh, with one of our mods, who's awesome. It was really fun. Yeah, Campfire Goth got in there with me. It was sick. I uh, played Plunderstorm, I think, two three rounds, and then we played just whatever, another hour or two of uh, Warcraft, getting back into it, working on the story of Legion. Very fun. The noob lever leaves. Him. Yeah, it's tough, too, because like I only play it on stream. Not to mention I was gone for two weeks, two or three weeks. But I only play it on stream, so I don't ever get that time to kind of like just focus and learn. So I feel like I'm always a little bit scatterbrained on stream, but it's still been so much fun. Honestly, it's been amazing. Yeah, so we'll play more. Probably, um, likely next stream is going to be Warcraft. Yeah, I might try and mix it up too. I, I've streamed the same time usually for Warcraft. So I'm like, man, what if some of the Philidari can't make that stream time? So I might do a little bit of different time for the next one just to see what's up yeah and i'm thinking i might also do like more often warcraft streams but slightly shorter like i'm, I'm starting to play around a little bit with the idea so we'll see what happens We're brainstorming hope you collab with marco again love that vid thank you man yeah um love the collab with marco i really really enjoyed it i gotta i gotta check to see uh yeah we had a few more ideas we want to do we'll see what happens I'm really excited for that Oh yeah, I love working with Marco. He's like, he's he's the one channel that I remember discovering, uh, you know, whenever it was and being like, oh, I feel like the two of us are kind of, yeah, have a good synergy. Uh, I think Legion is my favorite X-Pack leveling experience. Yeah, Legion has been really fun so far. Been really good. But thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the collab. We were talking in the Warcraft chat community night going over people to add on yeah i heard about that I, I was catching up on what you guys were saying i really like um i really like the idea of Aaliyah and i doing a transmog competition i think it's gonna be very fun um that idea really stood out to me i think that's that's a strong idea and i think it's very hype we got a lot of people in there uh the question is what's the prize is it just the glory of being chosen <laughs> as the winner maybe we can give a real prize uh note the hates hoping for some raids He's a beginner though. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, that was Shay's idea. I think that was Shay's idea, yeah. Shout out to Shay. Money! <laughs> Everybody's just like, money! Gold! Give me gold. That would get some people to turn up. Like 30k gold? That is a lot in the game, right? It seems like it is. Yeah, you guys have to help me brainstorm that too. Like, what's valuable to a Warcraft player? But honestly, we could give out, like, any sort of cool prize. Um, we could give out, like, I don't know, game keys or something for, like, some fun games. Yeah, who knows? One month Dragoon sub. You know, that's not a bad idea, Will. That's not a bad idea. One month Dragoon sub. Yeah. Oh, you know what we could do? We could also just give, like, a Dragoon, um, kind of freebie or something like that. That'd be cool. Essentially the same thing. Like a one month Dragoon sub, um, as in you would get to choose a video. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll brainstorm that. My daughter has, like, four million gold. Four million gold? Four million? That's unbelievable. How long has she been playing for? Like 20 years? That's crazy. Anyways, all right. Let's do it. I love chatting with you guys. I could do it all night. Let's start the viewer choice. I'm going to pause our glorious Warcraft music. And I think I actually already have it pulled up. We have this lovely, lovely video chosen by none other than... Night of Sarcasm. So, I'm going to show you guys what we're looking at here. Knight of Sarcasm has chosen <laughs> has chosen pointless top 10 NPCs you should know about in World of Warcraft. I think it's going to be good. Uh, a few options and winner chooses from options that we just, Oh, that would be cool, Will. Yeah, that's a good idea too. That would be good. Is the long boy still available? Almost to a long boy. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so here we are. Yeah. Top 10 <laughs> NPCs. Pointless top 10 NPCs you should know. I'm trying to figure out, like, is it saying top 10 pointless NPCs or just cool NPCs? Grandor's videos are great. Ah, exciting. Awesome. Well, we already have it pulled up. Let's do it. Uh, this is a shout out to Knight of Sarcasm, who's in the chat. Absolute legend. Thank you for being a dragoon. Appreciate you so much. Let's check out your choice for tonight's video. All right. Here we go. Another episode of Pointless Top 10, a show where we make top 10 lists out of pointless things. Why are we flying <laughs> by this pointless statue in Booty Bay? Because I inside pointless things are treasured. Let's begin. <laughs> 10. Number 10 is Miranda Love the it. Hag. And Miranda the Hag is a gnome located on a tree stump at Sorrow Hill in the Western Plague Lands. And Miranda was actually a master illusionist huh. of Lordaeron and Tyrion Fordring's most trusted advisor. She openly dissented the cool. verdict passed by the Order of the Silver Hand and was banished for her actions. And okay. she also knew Rexar and Thrall. In fact, she says that Thrall. she owes Thrall several favors. So I don't know what happened there, but... I mainly remember Miranda because of the Onyxia cool. Tombman quest, which is where you actually learn that she knows Rexar, and there's a whole bunch of stuff, but Miranda's such a weird character because she used to be one of the best illusionists in probably all of Azeroth, and then, you know, she knows all these big, powerful characters, and then we haven't seen her again. So the fact that she's an illusionist means, is she still around? She's just disguised? Like, I like how much lore goes into it, just a side character like this. These future expansions really cool. and these favors she owes him, or maybe she'll never appear again. But either way, I love how mysterious she is, and that's why Miranda the Hag is number 10. Nine. All right. Number nine is Darkon Drathir, and Darkon Drathir is the high elf that helped Arthas and the Scourge get past the defenses of Kelthalas, Arthas. betraying his people for power and immortality. Oddly enough, Darkon has one of the highest canonical death rates in World of Warcraft, dying what? four times, execution by Arthas, vaporization <laughs> by Anvina, what? killed with an enchanted arrow by Lorthamar, and then he got killed by us, the adventurers. Four there's deaths. actually a lot of theories on why he keeps coming back, and <laughs> it seems like the most common one is How? that he is part lich or necromancer or something. There's a theory that he tasted some of the sun well before Kel'Thuzad's remains were thrown into the well, and then Kel'Thuzad I love came how there's out theories as this lich about this guy. That's awesome. So he got, like, part of that. That's so fun. I don't know. There's, like, some crazy stuff, and I don't know if any of it's actually true or not but he's still a pretty cool character that i don't think a lot of people realize he looks how really cool he was to arthas and the scourge invading kalthalas and this that's is warcraft why three stuff he's huh? number nine eight number eight is the great akazam zarak i don't know how you say it akaz akazam zarak akazam zarak i can't say it uh he's a goblin magician normally found <laughs> entertaining people in dalaran 
and he's actually an expert with portals and teleportation and is recruited what? by the Tyrus Guard to teleport its members inside the Hall of the Guardian. And according to the Warcraft Wiki, he was notably capable of opening and maintaining eight separate portals to various locations what? scattered across three continents, which was a feat unprecedented by a single mage in the game. That's he crazy. also does magic tricks. So he stands in Dalaran and he pulls rabbits out of his hat. He makes flowers <laughs> appear out of his sleeve. He asks you to pick a card. And so then random. it's like a Hearthstone reference because the guy's like, wow, a golden Dr. Boom. And then oh. he's like, hey, not that card. Give that back. And then he also gets mad and says, hey, how about you help me with a new trick? I just need to find that saw. Or, yeah, sure, keep that up. You might just disappear, bub. And he also has a Futurama reference <laughs> where he says, screw this. I'm making my own mage order with Hearthstone and Succubi. So overall, Whoa. he's just a fun, goofy NPC that's also insanely strong with the amount of portals he can create and hold open. So that's why the great Akazam Razrak is number eight, seven. That's number funny. seven is Helcular. Whoa. And I put Helcular on this list because a lot of people know about Helcular's rod, the classic WoW quest. He has some bony arms, man. a lot of man. people know about the actual Helcular that that rod is from. So in the current version of the game, Helcular is a forsaken necromancer oh. at the ruins of South Shore. And you can actually find him in the old Hillsbridge foothills in the Caverns of Time dungeon where him and Kel'Thuzad in their human forms are oh. walking around together. They're and they human. pretty much have a conversation like it's Star Wars with the Emperor and Darth Vader and he's just like, what is this necromancy? And he's like, it's not something the Kirin Tor wants you to know. <laughs> and so after <laughs> all this, funny. Helcular was preparing to transform <laughs> himself to into a lich power. when a group of humans from South Shore found the cave where he was performing the ritual and murdered What's him. What's up, right Jasmine? There. How you doing? After that, he was buried in the South Shore graveyard, which leads us to the Helcular's Rod. Novice Thyvand, which was one of Helcular's apprentices, tells you to go get Helcular's mm -hmm. Rod and begin the process of resurrecting him so he can have his revenge on the people of South Shore that killed him. And so since then, in the Cataclysm, he was trying to find a way to remove the Worgen's immunity to the Curse of Undeath. And then in Legion, he actually led the forces of Azeroth against a bunch of demons. So he's actually doing pretty great. And that's why Helcular is number seven. Six. Cool. Number like six that. is Zanzel the Outcast. And yeah. I'm sure you've seen Zanzel the Outcast plenty of times. He was in Classic WoW where you had to do Zanzel's Mixture. Uh, he was in Zolgarub, the five-man Zolgarub. But the actual Zanzel is pretty crazy. So according to WoW Wiki, years ago, the Gurubashi exiled one of their cool. own from Zolgarub, a troll by the name of Zanzel. The reasons Zanzel. aren't all that clear, but it had most likely something to do with Zanzel's tendency to administer powerful behavior-altering drugs to anyone he saw. So yeah, that's that's a pretty good reason. Uh, <laughs> it's like, hey, what's up, Zanzel? Rude. He's like, hey, man, drink this. And you're like, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't really want to, but he's like, no, 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 dude, just come on. But yeah, his mixtures pretty much turn everybody that drink it into strong but feeble-minded zombies that what? obey him. Then in Cataclysm, Zanzel attempts to unite uh, the troll tribes of Stranglethorn into crazy. an army under his rule. That's he's a good been dungeon. brought back into the Gurubashi tribe by the shade of Jindo to help him restore Zulgarub to its former glory by resurrecting both High Priestess Jekik and High Priestess Vanoxis using his special elixir. Check He's it. then killed in Zulgarub, failing at his attempt to redeem himself. Dang. But just think about this. He's an Rip. insane alchemist that gets exiled from a bunch of crazy trolls because they're like, this guy's too crazy. And then after a <laughs> while, he gets brought back in because they're just like, listen, we need you to be crazy and make some crazy alchemy potions. And he's like, yeah, I could do that. Like his actual lore is pretty wild. And that's why Zanzel the Outcast is number six five this number is five strong is tabitha. list tabitha. it's a really strong list so far i'm loving it good good choice sarcasm Jackson from work glad to have you back thank you so much yeah we had a great time in japan again people just join in we're back um it's great to be back and just enjoying this video from night of sarcasm first one of the night yeah welcome everybody old hillsbrand is a dungeon that's awesome sarcasm yeah i'm enjoying this We'll continue. Uh, is a human quest giver located at Tabitha's farm deep in the quagmire. Cafe Elia. <laughs> and I actually covered Tabitha in she Pointless some Top chips 10. some chips and sauce, I think, coming soon. <laughs> However, I wanted to bring her back for this Pointless Top 10 because I found her so interesting. So she's this powerful mage that's living with two apprentices right now, but she's been training generations of apprentices at her farm from both mm. Alliance and Horde, though this shouldn't be possible as the humans only arrived in Kalimdor within the last decade. So already it's getting a little suspicious. She She's also an alchemist, just to throw that in there, because 
I saw one YouTube comment theory on my pointless top 10 farms that said maybe she created this philosopher's stone to keep herself youthful and she's not really human. There's also a theory that she was Medivh's mother, Aegwyn. And then there's the mysterious lore about her tiara that you have to get from Zulfarak from Hydromancer Velrotha. So cool. maybe Hydromancer Velrotha used to be one of her apprentices. I have no idea, but I kind of love that. <laughs> I love when lore keeps its mystery. I have no it idea. It allows people to create their own lore. And that's why Tabitha is number five. I will pause that since it's the number five. We have a new dragoon. Oh my goodness gracious. Pandora, NYC. Welcome once again to the Order of Dragoons. It's a pleasure to have you back with us. We knight you this day as one of the most powerful of the Philidari. Now claim your place among the elite. Thank you, man. Thank you so much, Pandora. Looking forward to your choice. I'm um, viewer choice. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a good time. Welcome, everybody, again. Um, if you're just joining, we're back from Japan. We're doing viewer choice. What's up, Coleman? Thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate everybody who's here. What a great night so far. Let's continue the list. Sarcasm is a four. glorious video Number here. four is Thelder and the Lost. And I picked Thelder and the Lost because this is the dwarf that punched Deathwing. So if you don't what? know this quest, it's a pretty famous quest from Cataclysm where this dwarf goes and he finds Deathwing and then he punches him. What's up, Hungry that. Sea? Everybody, you know, made videos about this. <laughs> How like, you doing? The dwarf that punched Deathwing. But I wanted to make this video about the other guys. We're watching that top Death 10 Wing pointless well. NPCs so from quest, World of he's Warcraft. At his camp with his two and other friends. Awesome. And Lucian <laughs> Tosselwrench says that he shrank the world down to search for Deathwing in the clouds, but then finds Deathwing. What's up, Coleman? Yeah, welcome. Thanks for the follow. Sunburned hands getting Deathwing out of the sun and then launches Deathwing what? to Alamdor, which I actually think is better than punching Deathwing. And then there's Martek the Exile, who How? says blood was raining from the skies, and there's all these fans around, and he takes one of his fans and his motorcycle to go knife fight Deathwing, but then when he goes to fight Deathwing, Beldurin shows up and starts punching Deathwing, and he's like, hey, get out of here. This is actual madness. definitely one of the dumbest best quests in World of Warcraft. The dumbest best quests. I just wanted to quest. give some love to the other guys with Beldurin, because I think their stories are also pretty great. So What's that's up, why... Jay? They're number four. Three. Number yeah, it's a wild is list, right, Hungry Seed? And Gunther Arcanus to me almost feels like a Tom Bombadil from Lord of the Rings. Tom Bombadil. So Gunther was a student of the Kirin Tor. Yes. But he was also a necromancer, Legend. even though necromancy was illegal among the Kirin Tor. He also had his Kirin Tor apprentice friends, Bethor Ishard and Thule Ravenclaw. Okay. However, during the Third War, Gunther and Bethor were killed by the Plague of Undeath, while Thule willingly sided with the Lich King. The crazy okay. part here is that Gunther actually breaks <laughs> out of the Lich King's domination on his own. He believed what? he was the only undead with free will and that all How? the others were scourge slaves. Oh, and he's Tom Bob Dill for sure. himself at Gunther's retreat where he had his zombie minions attack anyone who approached him. So, so that that's a really cool reference to Tom Bombadil. I don't know if he made that connection because of this, but he said he broke the Lich King's uh, sort of like will over him on his own. Tom Bombadil is so OP in Lord of the Rings that he literally puts on the one ring and it's just like does not go invisible and he's just like ha, ha. that's that's funny this is a goofy thing and like takes it off and everybody's like what and it's just never explained <laughs> so the theories of what or who Tom Bombadil is um go quite deep at the council of Elrond they're like can we just give the ring to Bombadil and they call him they just call him like the I think they call him father in Elvish that's his name it's like really crazy and uh, they're like, nah, he just doesn't care. Like, it's just, it's of, of no consequence to him. So he'd probably just like lose the ring and forget about it. It's like, it doesn't matter to him at all because there's no threat. <laughs> it's like, how strong is Tom Bombadil? So it's one of the, one of my favorite like Lord of the Rings rabbit hole uh, of theories to go down of uh, who Tom Bombadil is. Anyways, that's a cool reference. Popular theory is that Bombadil is actually a Luvatar in human form. Yeah, I've heard that one, Hungry Sea. Um, what was the reason that... People were saying there's like one reason why that might not be true. Other people said he could be, um, he could be, um, one of the demigods. He could be this, he could be that. And it's like, there's no full proof of like that he could be anything. But yeah, there's a lot of theories that just could easily make sense because he's way too powerful. He's way too powerful. And he also says, like, I think he says to the hobbits, he's like, oh, um, I was here like before the rivers and stuff. I was like, wh who is he? So that would mean that theoretically could have been there before, you know, uh, all of the gods were sent to Middle Earth. It's really crazy stuff, right? 
<laughs> I love how we just launched into a Tom Bombadil theory. He broke free at the same time as Sylvanas. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Bombadil is a great character, but the glad loves metal in the movie. Yeah, I'm okay with him not being in the movies because you just like it's such a cool sort of like episode. It feels like an episode with Tom Bombadil, but then he's not in it again. So it's like you're building up this awesome character that's just then out completely. Um, so I see why they didn't do it. I, I think the Lord of the Rings trilogy is like it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, he somehow doesn't know he is Luvatar. Oh, which is why Gandalf tells the council to leave him alone. I like that theory. That's really cool. I've never heard that spin on it. Yeah, that makes sense. I wish they had Bombadil in the films. Right. And then the question is, if he is uh, Eru Luvatar, who is Goldberry? Who's his wife? Right. It's crazy stuff. Because that was the thing they were saying. Um, he could be this and that demigod, but they're like, oh, who the heck is Goldberry? Then that was the difficult part they were having. I wish they had Bombadil in the films. Yeah, he would be cool. I think a quick little reference could have been fun, but again, it would almost be just too much of a tease then. Tom, one of my favorite characters because he's just there. Doesn't have a purpose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has a purpose for the story, but yeah, I see what you're saying. In the world. Gunther is so sad now, just chilling on his island. Yeah. Because the last time anyone angered Luvatar, he changed the shape of the planet and messed a lot of people up. That's a good point. I always heard he was the green man and a personification of the natural world. That makes sense too. I think that's what's cool is nothing is fully confirmed. So we just have these cool theories. Anyways, back to sarcasm. Let's video. fast forward to now and the Forsaken are like, yo, there's this powerful necromatic lich out there. We should recruit him. So Vethor, his old friend, who's now a Forsaken, sends you to go steal his spell book to figure out who this guy is. And then you bring it back and he's like, oh shit. That's Gunther. <laughs> so then Gunther asked the adventure to defeat Scourge agent Lilith Nefara. Huh. I don't know how you say it. To prove that they were also an enemy of the Lich King. So after that, he agrees to join the Forsaken and you bring a nether gem to Bethor so that he can communicate Wild. with his old friend. But it's very likely that this guy was one of the first free thinking Scourge, which is insane. Like he just broke out of the Lich King's domination on that, his own. That is and insane. that's why Gunther is number three. Two. Awesome. Number two is All Joran right, the Deadeye. Two? And Joran Deadeye is the son of the late Kilrog Deadeye and is the current leader of the Bleeding Hollow clan. He also ritualistically removed one of his own eyes to see a vision of his death. Just like Masamune. And when you Japanese talk to him history. in the Grand, he says, do you know who we are, stranger? The Magar survivors. Survivors of a fallen dynasty. Survivors of the Red Pops. Brown survivors orcs. of a shattered world. And something that I learned that I actually forgot about when I was questing back in Burning Crusade is that Joran Deadeye actually goes to Garrosh Hellscream for help. And Garrosh refuses to lend him assistance. I was also kind of curious what class Dang. he is. You know, like Rip. Thrall's a shaman, but it seems like he's some sort of witch doctor, warlock shaman or something i don't even know but That's i wanted fun. to put him on the list because this guy is like one of the most prominent orcs we have around like there's thrall and garage yeah. and all these guys we've had but like this dude is Kilrog Deadeye's son and he's still a leader of the bleeding hollow clan That's in awesome. fact in Dragonflight, he actually shows up again and he's like hey maybe we'll come back so I do hope Joran Deadeye comes back. And that's why he's number two. All right, one. that's number one. And number one is what Archmage is Arugal. And to me, mm. Arugal was always a guy that was just like, oh, you run SFK, you kill this guy. Like he was just a boss in a dungeon. But when you read his lore, I think it's so much more interesting. And it actually feels like he should be like a, a bigger character than what he is. So mm. Arugal was originally a respected patriot of Gilneas and a royal Archmage. And he eventually became a member of the Kirin Tor. However, okay, Dalawar Dawnweaver, a Kirin Tor mage later raises a Forsaken, considers Argal to have been a charlatan whose knowledge of spellcasting was so bad he was unworthy to even clean chamber pots in what? Valorain. <laughs> and it was actually true. He was bad at magic and he even had to enchant items to reinforce his weak magic. That's After funny. Dalaran was destroyed by the Scourge, he returned home to Gilneas. There, King Greymane wanted Argal to help him find a way to protect his kingdom. And so Argal's like, I mean, I know about these weird worgens or something. I could help summon them in from the Emerald Dream and they can protect us. However, they are pretty pretty crazy but king Greymane was like listen we gotta do whatever just bring him in and so using ur's research who was another dalaran mage arugal summoned worgen and fought off the undead that made it past the wall until they started killing the people of gilneas <laughs> and then they started spreading the worgen curse all throughout gilneas and then we know what happened after See, that's that. like my shoes eventually Argal then starts his own worgen cult and he goes crazy and tries to keep the <laughs> worgen under his magical control and then of course you go there and you find him and that is what he's doing another cool fact was that Argal had access to enchantments that allowed his favorite worgen servants to retain a fair deal of their human intelligence so after mm. learning all that i was like dude I should have read more about Argal. This guy's crazy. It's awesome. And that's why 
He's number one. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode of Pointless Top 10. That was if you awesome. Want to more Pointless Top 10s. Here's Pointless Top 10 Farmers that I mentioned earlier in the video. Top or 10 here's Farmers. NPCs if you want to That's see crazy. some weird NPCs. Also, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and become a patron if you haven't yet on Patreon. That's awesome. Yeah, shout out to Wow Crendor. That was a really fun video. Uh, I like it. What, what stands out to me is the. Uh, is the amount of lore that even goes into the the sort of like completely NPC side character. You can't even call them side characters. It's just like NPCs that are part of the lore and everything. They really put a lot of work into that. And that's that's lovely. Oh my goodness. What's this? Coman has subscribed with a prime boon. Thank you for this prime boon, Coman. Now rise and claim your place in our number, the Philidari. Thank you. Thank you so much, Coleman, for that prime boon. All right, let's continue. So thank you. Shout out again to Night of Sarcasm. I really, really liked it. That was awesome. That was a fun video. This is why I love viewer choice. I never know what I'm going to get. <laughs> Top 10 random NPCs, pointless NPCs. Um, that was amazing. We usually get like cool cinematics or whatever. This was awesome too. Um, yeah, let's get some Dragoon emotes. There's something fishing in odds. Coleman is all elite. <laughs> yes. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to go to the Philidari list. Let's see what's next. So we have completed Night of Sarcasm's choice for the night. And next we have Syncrostia has chosen Soul Reaver 4K intro. Sounds like a crazy cinematic to me. I have no idea what this is. So I'm really excited. So I don't know if uh, Syncrostia, Syncrostia, I don't know how to say it. Let me know if it's right, is here with us. But if you are, please say hello. And as always, uh, also with Night of Sarcasm, um, let me know if there's anything you wanted to sort of emphasize in that because that was your choice. If there's anything that I missed you wanted to talk about, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Syncrostia. It's me, Will Shaw. Awesome. I'm glad you're here, Will. Um, we're going to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, this seems like it's going to be a kind of like traditional cinematic. So I'll do an intro for this just in case we want to use it for the YouTube channel. And you guys get to see the... Uh, ooh. Cool. This looks really good. Yeah, we'll, we'll watch it first and then see, uh, see if we do an intro. I'll probably do it just in case. All right, guys. Let's do it. So shout out to Syncrostia. This is the Soul Reaver. 4K intro remastered. Awesome. This will be interesting. I'll record just in case. Um, I learned about Lord of the Rings with Gonthar. And yeah, <laughs> we had a really fun Lord of the Rings talk too. Did Philip ever watch the Antares ending cinematic? Doesn't sound familiar. Pretty sure he did. Was it from Warcraft? If it's from Warcraft, I've watched every cinematic in the game, essentially. Except for like maybe something from Cataclysm. I don't know. Seen pretty much everything. All right, here we go, guys. Soul Reaver 4K intro. Let's check it out. Whoa. Cain is deified. The clans tell tales of him. Ooh. Few know the truth. He was mortal once. The music is a stand That's what we all. However, his contempt for humanity drove him to create me and my brethren. I like this really cozy feel to the I am Razio, firstborn of his lieutenants. Awesome. I stood with Cain and my brethren at the dawn of the Empire. Oh. I have served him a millennium. He was human. Over time, time, we became less human and more divine. Cool. Cain would enter the state of change and emerge with a new gift. I really like the lighting here and the coloration. It has like kind of a an ancient feel to it. Some years after, like we're last looking back in history. Our evolution would follow until what? I had the honor of surpassing my lord. Okay. Awesome. Well, he didn't like that. I take it. That's a really interesting visual style. Like it's got to be what PS2. I'm guessing. Never played this game. Ooh, the translucent wings is actually really impressive for that era. Huh. For my transgression, I earned a new kind of reward. Oh no. 
Ooh. Ah! Oh, that's terrible. What the heck? Man, I love this visual style. It's not all that dissimilar from Warcraft. So it's kind of rounded edges. Kind of early PS2 look. It's very soft, very visually pleasing to the eye. Very one easy to look at. Outcome. My eternal damnation. Look at the color you see. It's beautiful. I, Azio, was to suffer the fate of traitors and weaklings, to burn forever in the bowels of the lake of the dead. Wow. Some really cool. him in. I like the facial performances too. Wow. He has become one with the planet. Tumbling, wow. burning with white hot fire. Ooh. Plunged into the depths of the abyss. Unspeakable pain. This is the one game? Um, Time right. ceased to exist. Only this torture and a deepening hatred of the hypocrisy that damned me to this hell. I really like the performance. Yeah, the music has that this beautiful old school. An eternity past. PS1 sound fine. My <sighs> torment receded. So nostalgic. Back. From the precipice of madness. And look at the color you see the, the blue now. The destroyed me, and yet I lived. More soothing tone, blue. So he's alive, you know. Wow! Look at his body, dude. He got all jacked up. You are worthy. You are worthy. Somebody said. Oh man, so this is a PS1 game? I thought, I figured it was PS2. That's actually really good. You had it for PC way back then, but it never worked. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, that's terrible. Yeah, that was really great. Yeah, shout out, shout out to the uh, creators. That was amazing for PS1. This game series is so lore deep. Yeah, that was one of the standouts there. I really like what they were doing with the lore. Um, like the whole intro was pretty much just a, an explanation of this culture and how it works and everything. And okay, you surpassed him with like this awakened power that just kind of happens to all of them in the culture, apparently. So it's implied that maybe it's like a divine gift that some other power chooses, um, but then doesn't really, you know, follow through on making that a reality. It's interesting, right? Because then the king is just like, no, you're too powerful. Get out of here. So yeah, it raises a lot of cool questions. I would say that's kind of the strength of this is definitely the world building. Very strong. Um, a lot of cool questions were asked. And the music is really cool. I like this establishing shot. It's just like the striking image. All right, that's the first thing I thought. Like, whoa, cool design for this throne room. Cain is deified. The clans tell tales of him. Oh, there you go. There, there it is, deified. So like by what power, which I think is really cool. Few know the truth. Yeah. He was mortal once, as were we all. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. As were we all. So I like how it's kind of dropping a little bit of breadcrumbs and it's allowing you to ask uh, really interesting questions. Like, we, we all were mortal. Okay, where is this going? Um, and it makes you just, yeah, punished him. Yeah, good good choice, Will. I really enjoy this. They're a race of vampires. Oh, really? They can evolve powers. Cain, green man, would evolve first and then bless the others. Ah, that's really cool. So he punishes him. The tech for this game far back then. Yeah, I, I'm really curious to see the gameplay after this intro. Because this is definitely pre-rendered for PS1, I can tell you that. Warcraft 3 vibes. Definitely Warcraft 3 vibes, yeah, with Arthas. It's fantastic. Uh, well done, travel plot over several games. I was going to say, I remember seeing something for PS2 that was Legacy of Kain, right? So that makes sense. What's up, Daniel? Welcome, Daniel Reyes. How you doing? A hidden gem. Yeah, it really looks like a hidden gem. I'm curious how I missed this one. But I didn't have uh, PS1 when it first came out, so that would explain it. These games were hype all over the... Okay, so they, they weren't like some lost games. These were popular. Okay, However, good. His contempt for humanity drove him to create me Deserves and to be. my brethren. He created I you. Okay. Razio, yeah. first born of his lieutenants. That's awesome. Yeah, so he created them uh, to attack humanity. It sounds like it was really fun. As you said, vampires... Cool, man. Really unique. I like the story too. Like, I, it's not a lot of crazy visual cuts, which is obviously, you know, for the PS1, for goodness sake, it makes perfect sense. But I like how they're kind of focusing, like I said, on the narration, explaining what happened, 
clearly he's alive and we're going to be going on this journey. You can also see his body looks like this. And then at the ending, he's just completely like hollowed out. Look at him. So I think what's cool is it might have that sort of symphony of the night effect. Right where it's like okay, you get to you get to see a taste of his full power at the beginning, and then it takes it all away. So you're gonna have this game where you kind of see the potential you can get, and I don't know if he's ever gonna look the same, but it's the idea that you know you're gonna be building back up his powers to one day challenge this ruthless ruler that did this to him, and I think that's really fun. Yeah. So while there's not a ton of like visual aspects to discuss, and you know, it's a PS1 level cinematic. Terrified. My goodness, for the time, it's well done. Like I said, for the time, the lighting's incredible. That's one of the first things I noticed. It's not just kind of like a standard, uh, you know, light the whole subject up. It actually has some pretty cool lighting, which is, you know, it is source lighting technically on the set from above, but they're actually taking a little bit of an extra step to show the rays of light shining down. That's really impressive for the time. And the subject has this cool light. Look at the shadows on the face uh, on both of the characters here. I'd say both of the characters of interest here and... The subject, you can see it cast this really cool shadows on his face. You know, it's a very dark story. It's a very harsh environment. It does a lot for the character. It carves him out in an interesting First way, too. His lieutenants. I yeah. stood with Cain and so it's really my cool. brethren at the dawn of the Empire. Really, really interesting. And I'm going to ask, this is the first game in the series. I'm, I'm going to take that it is because it's for PS1. Or I'm going to assume that it is. For my transgression, I One of the best voice acting in history? Really? I'm so curious now. Yeah, I just would see these game boxes in like Blockbuster and stuff like that. <laughs> I have never, I have never seen it. I've never played it. Second game, this is the second game? No way. Watch a playthrough of the story. <sighs> Amazing. Second, technically first one sets up Kane's Rise to Power. And that was also for PS1? Wow. And a new kind of reward. Yeah, really impressive work. Quite long too, but man, he really just broke his bones off. Oh, that's terrible. This guy's a ruthless son of a gun. He should have just fought him right there. I mean, this too for PS1. Like, this is hard to render, man. This is massive, sweeping uh, landscape with you know clever use of fog and stuff as it goes into the distance. But look at this. There's mountains, water graphics. This is not easy stuff to do, man, for that era. And even when we look at some of the really, I'm, I'm curious what year this came out because. Even when you look at some of the ones that are like have become iconic, like Final Fantasy VII, you know, pushing the envelope and stuff. I would assume this is after FF7. I could be wrong though. My eternal damnation. Yeah, it's a cool visual style. Razio. Just to drag him out and throw him. Yeah, rough. Cast him in. What a jerk, man. Cast him in. Yeah, he clearly does not want to be challenged. So you can see he's a a fearful ruler and paranoid at the least. Jeez. This was also like a loyal subject. That's the crazy thing. He just destroyed like his most powerful lieutenant, essentially, because he was paranoid that he might take over. Wild, man. Back from the precipice of madness. But look at that son of a gun. He, he's not looking so good. That's so cool, man. Yeah, I'm curious about the gameplay now, too. But anyways, thank you so much. That was a great pick. Uh, that was a great pick from Syncross Tire. Cool stuff. Never seen it. Never seen it in my life. Um, so advanced for that, definitely, definitely. Uh, there were what four, five games. Uh, I'm not sure. Was there really? Right after Ocarina of Time, really? No kidding. It's a really good one. Thank you so much for the follow. Sheesh. That's awesome. What's up, Guardian Angels? How you doing? Uh. Can one suggest another video for later? Yeah, if you're a Dragoon, so you got to be a Tier 2 sub on Twitch or a Dragoon on YouTube, you can suggest whatever the heck you want. We're just going in the order that people have suggested them um, for our members. Five games. Wow. Blood Omen, Soul Reaver, Blood Omen 2. Soul Reaver 2, Defiance. On what system did that end? Couldn't help but notice you watched most Blizzard stuff, but left out StarCraft 2. Goodness. Yeah, StarCraft 2 is... Uh, Whoa! Whoa! Oh my goodness gracious! We have a new dragoon. Thank you, Guardian Angels, for the tier two dragoon boon. 
We knight you this day and raise you to the most powerful warriors in the Philidari. Now rise and claim your place in our number. We have a new dragoon, everybody. Wow, thank you so much, Guardian Angel. So, Guardian, can't wait to see what you pick. That's crazy. Just walk in and do it like an absolute beast. Can't wait to see what you pick. Um, if you want, make sure to connect your Discord to your Twitch account. You will have access to the Dragoon exclusive section of Discord where you can post the link for your video. And uh, we'll be watching it as we get through the list. Thank you so much for that. Dragoon, Dragoon, Dragoon. <laughs> Ended on PS2. I see. I see. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for that. What a beast. Just walks in and does it. There's also a multiplayer game called Nazgoth. Man, this is like a whole saga of games that I somehow missed out on. It seems really cool. Maybe one time we'll look up some gameplay. Uh, that is awesome. Um, but yeah, shout out again to Syncross Tire. Really, really cool. Um, I have never seen that. I'm going to do an intro just in case. Um, so you just see it here. We're continuing our quest through gaming cinematics with Soul Reaver 4K intro. I was going to say Soul Reaver intro. Um, this particular video was chosen by our Dragoon tier member, Sin Cross Tire. If you want to choose a video for me to react to, click that join button and become a Dragoon or a tier 2 sub on Twitch. All right. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Really, really beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, next up. Next up, we have BlizzCon 2009 Cataclysm Revealed. This is going to be really fun. This is going to be really fun. Uh, and this was by Asim, Asim Reyes Eve. If you're in the chat, please make yourself known. Kane is on sale at GOG. Oh, really? I like your content and your breakdown. Thank you so much, Guardian Angels. I really appreciate that. Yeah, that means the world. Can't wait to see what you uh, you get in there. What you choose. Even though the stuff is old, these would make a great cinematic story journey. Yeah. I'd be curious about that. I'd be really curious about that. Like I said, there's just so much in there. I mean, I could talk more about it, but I really like the... Uh, I really like the lighting. That was the stand. I mean, look at the shadows. And you can see the shadows on the characters here. It's very well done. Um, I like the color use. You know, at the end, we kind of have this, like, he's suffered. This is, like, green, kind of uncomfortable green color. And then there's this serene blue at the end, you know, where he's kind of, like, restarting a fresh start on life. A little more calm of a color. Lighting in this scene is great, though. It's really, it's really lit like a movie in a clever way. Like I said, it is source lighting from above, but... You know, it carves out the character in a really interesting way. So it, you know, it's probably our other light sources, um, not just the source lighting um, that we see and we assume is what's lighting the character. So it's cool to see. Um, it's cool to see them go to that next level with it. I love it. Yeah. Anyways, we are watching BlizzCon 2009 Cataclysm Reveal, which I'm really excited for. And again, shout out to our Dragoon tier member, Asim Nryezyev. Please say hello if you're here. Is there length limitation? So the length limitation is um, you can choose a longer video, but I like to keep what I watch around 10 minutes. Okay, so if you can make that happen, great. And then what a lot of people are doing, like a lot of people say, oh, um, like we made up this rule because one of the first Dragoon tier members just selected like all cinematics from, I think it was um, Star Wars, The Old Republic or something. It was like a 40 minute video. And I'm like, eh. and somebody selected like an hour and a half video. I'm like, this doesn't seem fair to like just like you know give one person's pick this much time and then somebody could choose like a two minute video right so or like a 30 second video so i'm like all right let's keep it around 10 you know 12 is fine 12 is fine uh 15 eh, let's let's try not to do it so you can select the video that's like really long and then you could be like oh but i want you to watch from you know 12 minutes in to 20 minutes in. like if there's a section that you like um for me to break down yeah, I'll just pretend I wasn't looking at one that was two hours long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, for example, if you want to show, like, if you're like, oh, you got to watch all the videos from StarCraft or whatever, like, you could select one of them and uh, and show it, or whichever you were thinking. But yeah, try to keep it in that, just because, you know, I, I think it's fair. Like, otherwise, we're doing essentially a, a movie night <laughs> per person, which take a very long time to get through everybody's stuff. So, anyways, 
that's what we kind of decided was the most fair at this time. Anyways, let's watch BlizzCon 2009. This is going to be fun. Cataclysm reveal. I'm so curious because this was the height, right? This was the height of Warcraft for a lot of people. Lich King and like around that time. As the terrible war against the Lich King continues. Cool. The proud defenders of Azeroth fight to secure a lasting peace. I love the narration. But there can That's be yeah. no peace. When the world itself is devoured by rage. Rage. Man, it's so charming. Has risen. This time of the game. Determined to shake Azeroth to its foundations. Twelve million? That's crazy. And the world will never be the same. This must have been so hyped when this came out. the elements <laughs> battle for supremacy. Kalimdor and the Eastern Kingdoms have been transformed. Wild. Ancient lands have been torn asunder, unleashing widespread destruction. Awesome. But newfound life has also awakened. Yeah, new drastic world changes. I love it. Entire history of Warcraft in 20 minutes. That sounds awesome. New conflicts erupt as old enemies buy for control. I mean, it looks great. Diminished resources. It's a well done trailer. Like, how the did they film this? The, ocean, the maelstrom churns endlessly. That's awesome. Many islanders of the great sea have been driven from their homes, seeking sanctuary from the relentless upheaval. These scattered refugees find themselves shipwrecked upon the uh, lost uh, uh, isles, locked in battle against an unfamiliar enemy. Thank you, Guardian. I can't wait. But in their hour of greatest great. need, the goblins of Kazan have found new allies. The goblins. In the horde. What's up, Thrax? As destruction engulfs the far corners. I love the map that we're zooming in that. It's so fun. Wall. The fortified entrance to the human kingdom of Gilneas has been shattered. Perfect, Guardian. Perfect. Yet, those who were once human have become something more. Whoa! Oh, this is a new race. Morgan, right? First time. That's so fun. As the vile forsaken march south into Gilneas. Wow. An ancient ally resurfaces hey, to Night bring Elf. the savage Worgen into the alliance. Very cool. I like how they're alliance too. As the world teeters on the brink, and the mortal struggle for dominance turns to one of mere survival, the world's champions have adapted to new paths of Whoa. glory. Race class combinations. That's fun. What's up, Arceus? Standing Thank you so much. Those who would devour civilization. I've been loving Star Rail. My newest videos, they're so fun to me. And venturing boldly into the unearthed, forgotten bastions of antiquity. Wow. That's beautiful though. Look at that dungeon. Really well done. That's a good dungeon. Let's do it. Yeah. Classic zones forever changed. Level cap raised to 85. It's lower than that now. Right? Archaeology. I cannot imagine the excitement when this came out. Like it, it's you can see the world is like so it's still in its early state, but it also is somehow perfect, you know? Awesome. The world has been broken. A new age has begun. Yeah. The Alliance and Horde can only cling to hope. Great voice, Death huh? Wing has returned. Deathwing, yep. Yeah. So awesome. So I have a question. Was this before or after the Cataclysm cinematic drop? I'm, I'm going to assume it was after. Otherwise, that's kind of like a spoiler for the cinematic, right? Because that was really cool. That was really fun. Um, yeah, like I said, you can kind of feel the excitement 
There was so much excitement that many felt cheated. Oh no. Changed so much and they slipped away. So when you say changed, um, the map was literally destroyed, right? That's what happened. Like parts of the map were changed. So, all right, let me ask you guys this for the, for the Warcraft lore masters in the chat. What would you want to have happened to the game? Like if you go back to this precipice, cause this was peak, everybody loved it. 12 million subs. That's insane. If you could take it in a different, like what direction do you think would have kept or actually got even more? So like 13, 14, 15 million, what would it have been? Maybe like top three things to keep that just upward domination of world of Warcraft. Like, what do you think happened? Um, would have been just before as Deathwing broke out. Got it. They changed a fair bit of the landscape and quest lines, mainly because a lot of the vanilla zones were underdeveloped and had awful questing. Okay. So there was a reason. Thank you, Keb. They completely redid all the old zones. Oh, so th it's actually changed like completely. I see. I see. So it was more like um, finishing the game, right? Sounds like, as opposed to, you know, drastically changing it and, in Shadowlands, they crunch the levels right, right? Kept going up by 10. You need to hit level 130. Yeah, it does actually sound crazy. Well, I feel like the only way they could have made it, um, they could have kept the high levels, which I think is hype, if they had just uh, you know, given out more EXP or something, but that's probably a lot of work too. So it makes sense. Nostalgic expansion would have been nice. Example, Legion after Kata, which makes no sense today, but Pandora, yeah, I hear you. The announcement what was it maybe start playing oh wanted to see the world before they wrecked it that's crazy it does seem like kind of an odd choice looking back it's like okay everybody's playing this game we love it destroy the world <laughs> like wait wait people love this world they love to go chill there are you sure destroy it so i see why people were kind of scared about that but it wasn't fully destroyed right just parts of it what you see in wow is what the world used to look like in retail this is what the world looks like got it so you, you can do WoW Classic. See, now I see why WoW Classic is so popular. That makes perfect sense. Uh, you can see the old zones by using the Bronze Dragon. Ah, that's what you guys mean when you say that. I think I'm starting to get it. Ability pacing problems. You wouldn't get anything new for your class for 20 levels. Oh, yeah, that's tough. Don't think it was possible. A big reason so many people left during Kata, myself included, was that this was the first time they raised the system requirements. My computer can no longer run it. Oh, no. Oh, no. So that makes sense. You literally could not play anymore. There wasn't a place they could take the game after we defeated Arthas. Yeah, that's the thing, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do without Arthas? Like, it's tough, man. He's, like, so popular. And Warcraft 3 is kind of the background lore. So it's like, what do you do after the bad guy's gone? Another reason for flying mounts. Got it. A lot of people were upset about level squish. We'd spent a lot of time... Uh, getting our tunes level 20. Yeah, I wouldn't like that. If it's like, oh, there's an update to Final Fantasy. Your level 100 character is now level 40. I'd be like, why? That's just the, the kind of annoying. I really like all the time I put into that. The dopamine release. They use bronze dragons and time walking. Right, right, right. Time and consistency. Yeah. Classic has Kata coming out soon. They're changing a few things. They learned. Oh, okay. Hey, what's up, Campfire? Back from the gym, arms and shoulders. Great to see you. I was talking about you earlier, Campfire, how we played some uh, Plunderstorm. It was a good time. They always try to keep it uh, for his old game systems as possible. Yeah. I had to get a new machine. That is an odd choice, but maybe because the world grew in size, like they kind of had to crank up the requirements, but that's the problem with PC. Like Without having a standardized system that everybody's playing on, um, it's got to be tough with the new expansions constantly coming out. Number squish because people had like 4 million health and we're doing insane numbers. Yeah, but that's fun. That's what I'm saying, right? That's fun. Like in Final Fantasy X, when you go from having like 100 HP at the beginning of the game to like 100,000 HP at the end or whatever, you know, 10,000 HP and doing like 100,000 damage per hit. That is so hype. You can see the growth, you know. Accommodate new players. Yeah, I hear you. Draw distance alone has increased so much. Right. All right. It was huge when I played some tanks had more health than raid bosses. <laughs> it's so funny. Pre-Legion was another point where graphics increased. Okay. Intro of scaled leveling systems, which people did not like. Yeah, it's tough, man. How do you balance a game that big as it keeps growing? Please the old players, get new players. 
I would say lean towards pleasing the old players. It was my call because, I mean, that's that's literally who keeps the game going. People sometimes judge WoW's graphics. I like the graphics. Like we were just saying with the Soul Reaver, it's got this really kind of like almost Disney-fied uh, feel. Everything's kind of rounded. It's very easy to look at, you know. It's nostalgic. They added light sources to lanterns. They needed more. Yeah, that, that explains it. Need a strong computer. The numbers were too big. The game couldn't calculate it. That's wild. <laughs> It's crazy. It's fun to an extent because they need to shorten things like four, five. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. What's up, Wicked Lynn? Most new players want game to look and play like PS5. Oh, nowadays? Yeah. Totally. And that's the thing. Like, you will have a hard time, I think, getting young people um, who are used to playing like PS5 into World of Warcraft today, I would assume. Like, I'm getting into World of Warcraft and finding it really fun playing with you guys, but okay. Like, I also like N64 and played that when I was young. You know, I love that. So, it's not like a hard sell for me. Like, I'm already very familiar with that aesthetic and, and absolutely love it. So, yeah. As far as someone who's like, you know, 10 years old now trying to sell them on Warcraft, I have no idea how they take it. Maybe some people would think it's really charming and want to try it out. Who knows? The still image alone looks great. It really does look great. Look at this. It's not bad visuals, man. It looks like a, it's just stylization. It's just stylization. Like it looks like you're watching a cool, um, it could be a cool animated film in that style, you know? The lighting is there. The character is cool. Yeah, like Jasmine said, right? It's it's charming nostalgic. That's the first thing I thought when I saw the cutscene, because I had only seen, you know, War Within, which is like this almost photo real insanity. When I looked at the game, I'm like Oh, yeah, I remember seeing the ads for this back in the day. This is World of Warcraft. But I'd never seen the in-game cutscenes at all. Like, literally had no recollection of it. And I was like, okay, this is really interesting how they're doing this. MMO play style doesn't currently have a very good short-term content. Yeah. Absolutely. It's the same thing with Final Fantasy XIV. Like, it's a journey that is incredibly rewarding if you start. But, like, it's a commitment, too. So you got to really make sure you like it. You're going to start Vampire Survivors is super popular. Oh, yeah, totally. Vampire Survivors is what? Like NES graphics? Yeah. Though it probably is like, you know, on running on a 3D engine and stuff, just as the illusion of that. Um, I mean, I have been playing WoW for over half my life. That's so cool. Started playing when I was 15 and I'm 35 now. That is epic. I think you could take maybe a different style cartoons to just the characters and leave the game world. Give it maybe a more anime feel. Yeah. And listen, that's that's what I would assume if you put the two aesthetics next to each other and ask like a young person today, they'd probably choose FF14, especially with that graphics update coming up. It's a massive graphics update um, coming out in a couple months just because it looks like a little bit more modern. But who knows, man? Some might be like, no, 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 that looks fun. That looks charming. Like they might be like, because they're young. Ooh, that looks like a cartoon more. That looks really cool. So I don't know. It's hard to say. It's all sprites, right? That's so cool, man. But yeah, good. thanks for the insight, guys. I'm curious about that as people who were there during it, um, what the sort of mood was. Um, it's a shame that they they couldn't, like, you know, continue to grasp that just full power of the, like, Arthas insanity. But, I mean, it makes sense, right? It makes sense. Like, uh, what would happen in Final Fantasy VII if you're, like, you know, the main villains are gone, Sephiroth's gone. Uh, anyways, here's some new stuff. It's like, well, yeah, but we love... The original stories would be very hard to keep people interested. Um, there are zones that are a bit behind. Okay. Best thing about Wild's lore. Oh, totally. Yeah. The lore is what got me hooked when I started watching the cinematics with you guys. Incredible to me that WoW to this day runs so relatively well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. It runs It runs great on my PC. I enjoyed Kata, but I also was new at the time. Yeah. Only had played Wrath of the Lich King. Oh, that's super interesting. Cool time to get into it. Yeah, still near the beginning. Yeah, man. Ah, it's 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 interesting. I wonder like if they had taken a different route or like simply kept Arthas alive for the entire game until now. I wonder what would happen. Because you might actually have a different school of thought, which is like, man, Arthas has to die. He's been around too long. <laughs> so like I don't know, right? What what's what's the right answer with something like that? If you had just kind of tried to milk that story for too long, 
it might kind of backfire in a different way. So you got to make a decision with storytelling, right? And I think it's cool that they they had like a, a solid end to the character. And, you know, there was the Shadowlands controversy, right? Of how Arthas was appeared for a second and was kind of, some people said, wasted in my chat. Um, it's hard for me to have an opinion because, you know, I, don't, I wasn't there for all that, but I thought it was cool. Ever saw and captured my heart? Nice. Rather the Lich King to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Campfire. That's kind of how it ended up with Sylvanas. Oh, yeah, Sylvanas. But that's what I mean. Like, Sylvanas, I thought it was actually a pretty cool character. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like her kind of final final turn. Um, but, yeah, I guess my point is, if you didn't like Sylvanas, you might not have wanted to see Arthas get to the point where people were like, okay, there's maybe too much Arthas. Right? So it's kind of cool that he just went out like a champ when he was really popular. I think that's usually the better way to do it. Sylvanas wasn't the character she turned into. Yeah, and a lot of people, of course, uh, really don't like kind of believe the Sylvanas thing because a lot of people think it was last minute change in the story, which is tough, man. You got different writers on the project, right? So it could very well have been the case. Um, in fact, it's probably pretty likely with different writers coming in. Yeah. Sylvanas burned my tree. Ah, oh, sorry. Sorry, wickedly. Three different writers and not Metz. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, three different writers and not even the counting the original writers. So four writers, really, in, in this story and probably more. Um, yeah, it, it's going to feel disjointed. It's just not possible, right? Even if you have even if you have a writer literally like like following the exact notes for the full story that was outlined by the original writer, it's still going to have a completely different feel if it's like written by someone else, you know, and that's, that's just the reality. If you don't even have that outline, oh man, it's going to be all over the place. Yeah. Big Sag. The book does try to explain more for Sylvanas' story. Yeah. I, I'm excited to read the books. You guys got me, um, the Arthas one, which I'm really pumped for, uh, actually another book as well. So, and a uh, world of Warcraft art book you guys picked up from my, uh, my throne, my wish list. So thank you so much. Um, I'm probably going to do some of that on stream and or Patreon, like reading some of that. It's going to be really fun. Um, at least we got a cool AF cinematic between her and Solfang. Oh, yeah, that was like one of the coolest. You got to love that, man. You got to love Battle for Azeroth cinematics, if nothing else, right? What's up, Matt Vix? You're looking for one of the best trailer ever? Check out Warhammer Mark of Chaos. That sounds amazing, Matt Vix. I want to do more Warhammer because I've done... Uh, I've done a couple of Warhammer ones. Thanks for the follow, Madvix. Um, I've done a couple of Warhammer ones that were like, they performed really well on my channel. I think I think my uh, Astartes one is like around 300k views. That's huge for my gaming channel. So I'm really like excited to go more into Warcraft. There's a lot of uh, a lot of enthusiasm from the community. I was like, I was very um, welcomed into that. You meet such an array of mostly wonderful people, says Jasmine. Yeah. Met friends online that became great friends in the real world. That's ah, beautiful. Been to weddings together. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, when we had, if you guys weren't there, I, I still got to post this as a solo video. We had a community night where Aaliyah and I just like heard everybody's stories about World of Warcraft. Saw your characters, heard your stories. It was like the coolest thing ever, man. So wholesome. And pretty much everybody had this like super wholesome story about how positive it was. Thanks for that link for Philip and Aaliyah. Check out our channel. We got Japan vlogs on the way from our trip. Speculation going on right now. The whole remnant of Arthur's soul fading. Oh, okay. Shay, interesting theory. That could be fun. I'm I'm into it. I really like Arthas. I think it'd be cool. Roche welcomes you. Why do you have a Tamarian term, soldier? <laughs> hey, Roche is awesome. Roche is awesome. Uh, I was shocked for the quality of the logistic choices. The first time I saw it. Oh, really? Yeah. I got to check it out. Are you talking about Astartes or the other one you mentioned? I'm really excited to uh, look at more Warhammer. We were in uh, we were in Japan and we went to the Warhammer like official shop in uh, it was in Tokyo, I believe. Awesome! They were so nice to it. They literally gave us a figure. They let us paint a figure and just gave it to us. They're like, "Oh, where are you from?" And we're like, oh, "Really far away." And they're just like, "Take it." <laughs> I'm like, what? It was so nice. Um. Yeah. Super, super cool. Yeah, like I said, we got vlogs coming. You'll be seeing some nice stuff from our trip. Very fun. 
Yeah, 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 it was it was awesome, man. Again, Japan was just too many stories to tell. Maybe sometime we'll sit down and uh, tell tell it all. But we do have the vlogs to kind of fill in a lot. So, Aliyah says, "Yeah, she's resting. She's on the beanbag." Yo! Oh my goodness! What in the world? Sector Six is raiding with a party of five. How you doing, Sector Six? Welcome to the Philidari. Thank you for bringing your troops to the cause. How you doing, man? It's great to see you. It's great to see you. You playing some Rebirth, man? How you doing, Mephisto? It's a raid. I have a weakness for Japanese treats. After eating the food over there, I don't know how you couldn't have a weakness for any Japanese food. Doing good, man. How about you? Doing great, Sector Six. Doing some viewer choice videos tonight. It's so much fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. Um, we're looking at the... Right now, we were watching Cataclysm Reveal from Warcraft. That was a fun one. A very, very good time. And we're just having a good time tonight, yeah. Um, finishing up some last bits and pieces. We're doing a hard run. A hard mode run. Oh, that's so fun, man. Yeah, I, uh, I went to Japan. I, I'm assuming you don't know this. I went to Japan like a couple days after the game came out. For two weeks, and then we had PAX East, Aaliyah and I. She was working over there with Quantic Dream, so we're like, we're behind on Rebirth, but we're catching up, and it's been it's been so much fun. I'm um, going to be streaming more of that soon, too. Cannot wait. Uh, every five minutes, when both of us have played it, we're just like, best game ever. Yeah. Yeah. Best game ever, obviously. <laughs> it's just too good. But thanks so much, guys. Check out Sector 6. Big Final Fantasy fan. Um, yeah. Runs a great show plays like all kinds of stuff pixel remasters final fantasy 7 rebirth tons of good stuff mega busy times yeah it's it's been good though it's been really good so yeah check out sector 6 if you want to uh enjoy more lore and uh and just generally enjoying the awesome story of final fantasy is Aaliyah allowed to speak about what her affiliation with quantic dream is yet if it hasn't been mentioned which i may have missed yeah um i can tell you so she was the official cosplay of the main character of Dustborn, um, their new game that's coming out. Yeah, it's really, really good. And we've gone to Germany to work with them, and then they brought us to PAX East, which was crazy. So we've been traveling around a lot. It's been very good. What's up, Athena? Good to see you. But it was awesome. Yeah, Quantic Dream, amazing. Amazing people. And we ended up meeting... Uh, Meeting a lot of nice people from other gaming studios over there as well. We hung out with Ben Starr again. If you guys saw, I got Ben Starr a gift from the Final Fantasy uh, Square Enix Cafe in Tokyo. And gave it to him. That was sick. FF10, best FF, changed my mind. I, I'm right there with you. I love FF7 probably just as much. But, I mean, FF10 is pff, it's like one of the greatest games ever made. <laughs> no question there. Story, oh, it's perfect. Um, I see just Googled. Yeah. Yeah. Dustborn. And everybody, everybody's like, so wait, that's just you, Aaliyah. That's you in the game. Like they, she looks so much like the character. It's awesome. So yeah, it's been so much fun. Really, really nice people. And we were, we were chilling with them, uh, like I said, in Germany and then at PAX. Good stuff. And of course we got to see a lot of our other, uh, our YouTube friends. We missed you there. Sector six. Hopefully we'll get to see you at another con. Very good. Yeah. You okay? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Let's continue our viewer choice. Thanks again. Sector six for that awesome raid. Um, what's next for us? What? Probably do a couple more. Awesome. Okay. We have here, uh, next is from baked hot dog. Yes. Baked hot dog. I know is in the chat squadron 42. I held the line. Is this, is this Warhammer? What is this? What is this, guys? I'm still recovering from GDC, so I feel you. Oh, really, Owl? Yeah. You and Aaliyah need to go to the next BlizzCon as Rathian and Sindragosa. That would be sick. Or Saragosa. Is that a different character? That would be awesome. Yeah. Um, When is BlizzCon this year, and where is it? Does anyone know? Is that announced yet or no? This is the announcement video showcasing the Squadron 42 is now complete. And what some of those features are. The timestamps are a couple cinematic moments from the game. Oh, okay, Hot Dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is Star Citizen. Awesome. Okay. 
So the timestamps are a couple of cinematic. Mo uh, okay. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to scroll over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. All right. So let me click on the link. Let's get this popping. Ah, I see. Yeah, because it's a longer video. Thank you. I really appreciate doing the timestamps. Okay. Only the first four minutes, 45 seconds, and then we jump to 13 minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, this is it. Uh, shout out to our Dragoon tier member, Baked Hot Dog. Absolute legend. <laughs> and it's good to see you in chat as well. Um, we are going to check this out. This is Squadron 42. I held the line. We're going to jump a little bit through here. This will be great. Uh, somebody said it's usually in California uh, and usually in the fall. Okay. Awesome. Star Citizen is the online sandbox. Yeah. I've seen just a couple things from this and it looks sick. Not announced yet. Says, oh, gosh. Okay. Speculation is not happening this year. Ooh. No BlizzCon. Interesting. Okay. We're going to watch this. This is great. Shout out to Baked Hot Dog. Four minutes, 45. We're going to watch first. Cool. Man, that's gorgeous. Is that, if that's in game? Whew. That's beautiful. All in game. That's insane. Just like the cloud simulation alone, man. The lighting. You guys seeing this? Oh yeah, this looks ridiculous. Is this for PS5 or just PC? The heck kind of machine run is yeah, really nice lighting. Look at the sort of like, um, there's an ambient lighting coming from like that cloud over there on the red on the rocks. And then there's, of course, this like star light, which is beautiful. Very strong. Yeah, this game's been being developed for a while, right? Woo! The music is great. Look at that. Very impressive. And this is like all of these ships have interiors, right? Because this is in game. Wild. In position and holding now. Yeah, it just feels so grand. And knowing that the planet in front of you is also explorable is ridiculous, all right? Yeah, it looks really good. PC only? Ah. Yeah, I really hope they uh, throw that on like PS5 or something eventually. But don't know if they can handle it. Ooh, cool. I know I just roped you. But a couple of hours ago, proximity sensors on, on the, the other, other side, side of the jump got torn. What? Where it is, it might be that clan we've been battling with. So is this custom characters they're showing? I guess that last fight didn't scare them, them off, off quite like we all hoped it would. Yeah. Honestly, because my little voice too. We've been out here so long. I don't know what to pull for anymore. Jeez. I just, I just wanted to let you know. That's so cool, man. I'll ride as soon as I can. Stay safe. That's great. Your loving son. Whoa. This is like the intro to the game. That's great. Yeah, it just seems like a world that you could do absolutely nothing and explore for like a hundred hours and have the best time ever <laughs> you know whoa look at the lighting never gets old does it hmm. sir sir at ease i used to do the same thing when i was first coming up awesome post up to the flight deck whenever i could to watch the launches <laughs> amazing Performance capture too is really good. Have you seen the F eights up close? No, sir. I think's a beast. Awesome. Nimble too. Twelve maneuvering thrusters and three mains. It sure sounds like it. 
sir. <laughs> that was funny. Captain McLaren to the bridge. Captain McLaren to the bridge. Really nice. Look at the hair too. Really well done. I saw you apply to the flight academy again. Yes, sir. Again. Keep your head up. Took me a couple times before I got in. Yeah, incredible. Thank you, sir. Very, very grounded filmmaking here, which I like. Um, you know, it's not overly fancy. It feels like I'm in the room. It feels like almost a documentary film because it's so real. And that's that's what they're showcasing here. They're showcasing this is a world that you can live in, that you can customize your character and just exist in. I really like that scene. You know, nothing overly fancy. Just like great fundamentals. Awesome over the shoulders. Like, yeah, loved it. Welcome to Look Cloud Imperial this. Games Manchester Studio. I'm Chris Roberts, and I'm pleased to awesome. announce we have just passed the major milestone. All right, cool. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit to see more of the uh, to see more of the cinematics. Thirteen to uh, thirteen oh eight to sixteen thirty five. Okay, perfect. Let's go there. Yeah, if you look at this again, just to talk some details. I really like how they, they show, you know, this is like an up and coming guy um, or girl, depending on whatever you choose. Right. And it's really cool that you have um, this kind of like excited person who quickly gets snapped to attention. The commander. Never gets old, does it? Sir. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Great scene. Like I said, just I used to do really it. solid fundamentals here. A couple of tracking shots, focusing on showcasing the world. Just that's so awesome. That, and of course, they're focusing on the scale here, too. Um, they're focusing on the scale of both the characters, but also, you know, the sheer size of the world and kind of contrasting it like that, which I love. Sir. Fantastic. Really nice lighting, too. They're kind of just like the ships outside are emphasizing that very strong sort of like starlight that's coming, you know from the sun <laughs> it's really cool and they're you know using that to kind of carve out the background of the scene you have this beautiful ray of light coming in the window and you just have these nice little uh kind of like my background right you put a little light here and there to have some bokeh and have it just pop a little bit it's nice Captain McLaren to the bridge. Captain McLaren to the bridge. awesome yeah. i saw you apply to the flight academy again fantastic yes, and obviously sir. this is a this is a showcase is focusing on performance very wisely so to have such great actors right keep your head up took me a couple times before i got in yeah even like the eye movement is fantastic and stuff so organic thank you sir but i do like again feels a little bit documentary just because there's a little bit of um subjective feel to the camera it feels like you're in the room because there's a little bit of camera shake not some crazy you know like whatever insane you know, like hunger games camera shake that makes you just want to leave the theater and you know go home <laughs> it's just like a little bit uh that makes it subjective because okay it's a perspective of someone who's alive very cool yeah i like it all right with that let's skip to 1308 Awesome. Let's check chat quick. Hey, what's up, Blue Eyes? How you doing? A lot of huge named actors. Yeah. Noticing I was watching on your Twitch. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, the captions are here. Who else is on the actor roster? Yeah, it's it's looking great. This immersive adventure, you'll find cutting edge cinematic story. Ah, okay, cinematics and story. Hopefully crafted to fully immerse you into your story. This is our cup of tea. Let's check we it out. We fight today. Whoa! So in 40 years from now, when you're surrounded by everything and no everyone way. you hold dear, and they ask, what did you do? Is Gary Oldman? In the Battle of Vega. No way. You can look them in the eye and say... Impossible. I heard the line. No way. That's insane. Men and women insane. of the Second Fleet. In a video game? I am proud to stand with you today. Good luck crazy that they captured this like little chin movement that Gary opened it. Wow. Nice speech. Amazing. Oh, it's uh, what's his name? Mark. From the recon team? What's his name? Mark. Uh, yeah. uh, Let's get into position. Mark Strong. Yeah. He's great too. Man. Some amazing actors here. Wild. 
Chom Dog, how you doing? <laughs> Dude, Gary Oldman, Sam, isn't that crazy? <laughs> no, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Again, focusing on performance. I like how they're not doing anything over the fancy. They're pretty much showcasing how good it looks. Throughout the polish phase, yeah. our team is taking every opportunity to push things to the what? next level. John Tell Rice Davies? Company. This is not good. The Cine team no is way. focused on finalizing edit lock no on all of our big action as well as Wait, all no, that wasn't who I thought it was. Sequences. I could have pulled this off of the Galactopedia. That's Mark Hamill. Yeah, probably, <laughs> what? But I think their solar mass calculations are wrong though. What? Well, this is ridiculous. How so? We are now able to adjust our shot composition what? to final camera. We have Gimli and Luke Skywalker and scenes together. This is wild, man. What is this game? Thanks to recently crafted space vistas. So look, this is before and this is after. What in the world? It says, yeah, insane difference in pretty much everything. Um, there's, there's a level of organic lighting here that is just beautiful. There's a really diffused lighting coming on the character. Look here, it's a little bit more harsh, even though it's still like kind of mimicking diffused lighting in real life. There's still a little bit of harshness in it and it's just kind of flat, so to speak. And in this, look at this, just ambient diffused lighting, just very softly going across the face. You have some room lighting on the edge of the hair to build out the subject. Absolutely insane. And there's like a haze in the background too. Like what kind of lighting tech are they using? What is this? Th All right, who can run me a chat? There's this new lighting technology that is like beyond ray tracing that they invented. And I saw like one picture of it. I think it was showcasing it in like cyberpunk. Um, it looks ridiculous. It looks photo real. Um, so I don't know if this is that or not, but let's keep watching. And level art being content complete now. It'd be nice Absolute to know madness. how much of a shit storm we're flying into. Dude. More like a hellstorm blue. One you ain't gonna fly out of. <laughs> Shut up. Now, Shut I up. haven't seen another ship that wasn't trying to kill me in days. Let alone a hauler, let alone a Jean. Insane cat. So you can imagine my surprise. Detailed lighting passes can be done on hero sequences so we can show our cast and convey their emotions in the best light possible. And it's ridiculous. And we're making sure our cinematics are triggering as fluid as we can craft them so they form a coherent concerto with the rest of the player's narrative experience. It's so impressive. Mr. Wexler, this is Lieutenant Commander Colton. Oh. And they call it to mine. Hey, Julian Wexler, oh, I'm the field manager of this little operation. Welcome aboard the Archon. What brings the Navy to this? Oh, this is the guy universe? from uh, Rogue One, too. We got isn't flying it? with Lieutenant Commander Colton. No <laughs> way! As others will share, this is the most rewarding oh, dude, what's his name? He's the man. Which allows us to truly experience the visceral and what oftentimes is this emotional moments that our narrative provides. Oh my goodness. Path tracing, is that what it's called? Yeah, you path tracing. After Vega? Dude. I'm not sure I handled anything. What's up, HJ? You How you doing? Remember that stuff like this is supposed to hurt. <laughs> what is going on? I've never been good at dealing with problems I can't fix. Unbelievable. Well, this is one that you don't have to do alone. <laughs> That's good to know. Look at that. For the animation teams, polish phase means refining Wild the stuff. social aspects of Squadron 42. So I want to go back a little bit and look at this. Look at the... Uh, yeah, this is the best way to describe it. There's like this kind of naturalistic haze in the lighting that is just that is just not usually present in games. Space is not ready for this cast. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Path tracing. Yeah, I think that must have been the thing. It was just a screenshot of like Pan Am from Cyberpunk. And it looked ridiculous. I'm like, what is this? Henry Cavill is in it as well? Of course he is. <laughs> Who else? Who else is in there? What a crazy cat. I can't believe they got Gary Oldman though. Like a lot of the, like, I feel like Mark Hamill, he's done a bunch of voice work. He's done video game work in the past. Gary Oldman is a crazy person to get in a game. I feel like he's not done stuff before. I could be wrong. Gaming stuff. Yeah. All right, let's see. That's good to know. Insane. For the animation. Mika. I want to see the before and after again. Yeah, that was the one I want to see. Look at this. And what happening to the hair is you can still see the kind of like individualized like triangles of the hair and how it like sits there. And then it just becomes a little bit more fluid. I don't know what the word is. So cool. 
Ah, oh, it's amazing. And even this, you know, the light, how it kind of bleeds over the shoulder. Oh, man, that is just subtle, subtle work. Looks really, really photo real. And to have that kind of space behind it rendered in this insane scale is just completely out of control. Completely out of control. Uh, glad you see still around, dude. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, HJ. Good to see you. Hope everything's great. Sounds like you're killing it. Thanks for stopping by. Andy Serkis uh, is in it as well. He's an alien. Of course, Andy Serkis is an alien. Are we surprised? <laughs> They're in another Chris Roberts game, Wing Commander 3. Ah, I see. So they have, um, so they have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, probably connection to the studio. That's really cool. Yeah, of course, Andy Serkis would be an alien. That's exactly what I said. Hysterical. Oh man, what a what a showcase! But yeah, I mean, I talk about the lighting all day. It's really, really groundbreaking. This is obviously a little bit more of a, um, a almost like a tech demo just to show how good it looks. So, um, you know, they're obviously focused on that and the performances, which are completely stellar. What I'm looking forward to is when this drops, which I'm afraid to ask if there's a date yet on it, right? Because it's been been worked on forever, right? You guys said, um, but if there is a date, I would love to see when this is done, like a kind of fully completed cinematics that we can break down the sort of story of of the camera work and how it's playing into it and stuff this is uh just a few shots here and there but incredible work yeah i mean even look at the background bokeh like we were talking about Ika. before this has this really really soft feel to it it's incredible it's something that can really only be achieved with those kind of like cine lenses like the you know f1.4 and those just ridiculous apertures um but it's just so soft very impressive no date yet, of course, of course. But hey, they're clearly working on it, man. It's not sitting there stagnant. They've been putting, uh, they've been putting that time to good use. I would say. Very, very impressive. The character is shown sweating. Yeah, that's the other thing. That look, I thought it was a tear at first. I think it might be a tear as well. But there's just sweat <laughs> coming down the character. There's like wetness in the eyes and stuff. Really impressively done. Yeah, really impressively done. <clears throat> awesome I wonder where Star uh, I wonder where Star Wars Eclipse from Quantic Dream has finished then uh, one of the most photorealistic things I've seen yeah yeah that's the other thing um, working with Quantic Dream like really excited about their upcoming projects as well like I said at PAX East we were uh, we were working on that that's awesome no date yet but a lot of the work that has been moving on hope you're doing well excuse my thoughts take care of you yeah thank you so much HJ have a great night Really appreciate it. You too. There's no date yet, but a lot of the devs have moved over to work on bringing assets to Star Citizen. That's yeah. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say with a with stuff like that happening, it's a very good sign. It's mostly like, all right, most likely, okay, we are almost done. Let's pull in some extra help to close this close this case and release this thing. So that's really good. Yeah. The last four seconds, I think. What's that? A brief alien at the very end of the video. Oh, they do show aliens. So. There are going to be aliens. Good to know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, so the last, I saw a video of Star Citizen before, and I feel like it was just, um, it was only exploration. I think we watched it on a viewer choice. Am I, am I remembering correctly? It looked really cool. So, um, yeah. If that's the same game, which I think it is, very interesting to have this level of cinematics, because when I watched that, I figured it was like, that was the first one he suggested. Yeah, that's what I thought, Hot Dog. When I watched Hot Dog's first one, I was like, this seems just like a complete sandbox, you know, insanity that will never uh, have too much of a story. And man, was I wrong. This is <laughs> this is insane. And again, with a game that's so open world, uh, open worlds, I should say, uh, I'm curious how they're going to make the story come into play. Like, will it work depending on what planet you're on? Will it change the story? Is it a set thing? But man, with actors of that caliber thinking it's probably a set story right yeah i think that was the video that made me implement the length rule yes it was like what 25 or 30 minutes and i was like it's kind of long it's kind of long but we'll we'll skip a couple parts of it yeah awesome well thank you so much hot dog this has been a glorious viewer choice yeah oh you can see a little bit more here One too you yeah. don't have to do alone that's awesome I want to skim through a little bit more. Yeah, that looks great. Somebody said there's an alien right at the end. Ah! 
That is indeed an alien. Ah, is that Andy Circus? That's wild. Yeah, I'm just still appreciating the lighting. I mean, this shot right here. Man, they're really flexing with this. The way that the light is diffusing through the fog and the mist. Like, if you had shown this screenshot to me, I'd be like, oh, cool. That What set is on that? Is that on? <laughs> it looks photo real. Look at that. Yeah. And it, it really is that sort of misty, um, like diffused lighting coming through the fog, which is like, I feel they have not had in games um, before this new technology. It just adds that next level of kind of like, you know, achieving the space, making it look real. It's really kind of unnerving. That's Andy Circus. <laughs> All right, let's play it as we can hear. Of course it is. That's Andy Circus. That's wild. I love it. Creature voice. Of course. He's going to kill it. CGI movie scenes that look like this. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I don't know if there's many CGI movie scenes that I can see a still like that and be like, oh, that's real. Right? Like 100%. I feel like you can usually tell. This is crazy. So anyways, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. I mean that in a good way. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. You're saying it looks pre-rendered. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And a complimentary, convincingly good. Yes, yes. I agree with that. Sheer madness. <laughs> yeah. Only think of District 9, right? Impressive stuff, man. Impressive stuff. Well, thank you, Baked Hot Dog. That was a wild choice. Um, let me see how long the next one is here on the viewer choice. That was awesome. Um, you know what? I'm going to do an intro for that one because I feel like that one I might end up posting. Um, we're continuing our cinematic quest through games with Squadron 42. I held the line. Star Citizen Showcase Cinematic. This video was selected by our Dragoon tier member, Baked Hot Dog. If you want to choose a video for me to react to, click that join button. Become a Dragoon or a Tier 2 Twitch sub. Awesome. If you've been enjoying our time together, check out some of the other videos we've covered on this channel. You're excited about the next video? Oh, you don't say. Azure Wing. Charlemagne. Epic story. How it became more powerful than Frostmourne. Oh, uh, we're going to do this. This is nice and short. Charlemagne is... Whoa. Awesome. All right, guys, this next video is selected by Azure Wing, our awesome Dragoon tier member. Let's check this out. We got a short and sweet little lore video here. Let's get into it. Charlemagne is one of the most legendary and most recognizable two-handed awesome. swords in the World of Warcraft universe. Definitely, Bested yeah. Bested in popularity only by Frostmourne and the Ashbringer. This weapon has an epic... Mm and eventful history, most of which you probably don't know. Mm. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the history of this awesome blade from the time it was forged and up until now. I'm Erratic, a World of Warcraft content creator here on YouTube and over on TikTok. I also stream over on Twitch. If you enjoyed this video, please drop out. me a like and subscribe <laughs> to the channel. It awesome. lets me know that you like this type of video and that I should make more of them. Let's dive into the history of this legendary blade. It's Shalom more time. It's actually the combination of two night elven blades that were forged during the War of the Ancients. The first blade Legend, was named legendary Shalator, scene. meaning Shadow Render, and the second was Elamane, meaning Reaver. To find out how these two blades became Shalamane, we have to look at the past of the first wielder, Varian Wren. Varian Wren was the king of Stormwind when the black dragon Anixia infiltrated the nobles and took on the guise of Katrana Prester. Anixia had Varian kidnapped and performed a ritual on him that separated Varian into two separate people. One of the variants was strong willed Stop. while the other was <laughs> passive and easily manipulated. Variants. The two variants suffered severe memory loss and the strong willed variant was enslaved by the horde. He became a renowned what? gladiator and eventually escaped his captors. The two variants eventually found each other and were wow. gifted the two elven blades, Shalator and Elamane so by cool, Jaina man. Proudmoore. The variants then confronted Anixia. During the fight, she inadvertently combined the two variants into one, which Whoa. also magically merged the two blades into Shalamane. That's cool. Anixia was the first slain by this new blade. This is very Kingdom Hearts, by the way. to wield the blade in either hand and was able to separate it into the two night elven blades. During the Ashenvale War, Shalamane had an epic encounter 
with the legendary axe Gorhau. It appeared that Varian was gaining the upper hand, but the two were separated and the Horde was forced to retreat before the battle could continue. As the Burning Legion began to enter Azeroth at the beginning of the Legion expansion, Varian landed on the Broken Shore and cut through masses of demons while wielding Chalamain as the original two Night Elven blades. As heroic as he was, Varian was eventually slain, and the two blades were left on the Broken Shore. Yep. And when Ren, saw Varian's that. son, would eventually recover Chalamain, and after fully accepting his role as king, the weapon shone with light again. During the events of Battle for Azeroth, Varrock Sarfang challenged Sylvanas oh, to a mock Gara, which is a duel of honor in Orcish culture. Anduin gave Chalamain to Varrock, which he split into the two Night Elven blades. Although Varric lost his life to Sylvanas, he did land a blow during the fight that sliced her eye. That's Anduin right. recovered Chalamain, but at the beginning of the Shadowlands expansion, he was captured by the Jailer's forces. While being jailed in the Tower of the Damned, Torghast, the Jailer had the Moss Worn oh, yep. reforge Chalamain into a Morn Blade even more powerful ah, than Frostborn. This terrible. Morn Blade was called King's Morn. The Jailer infused King's Morn with the soul of Arthas Minithil, which empowered it with the domination magic it needed to control Anduin. Wild. Anduin proceeded to collect the Covenant sigils with King's Morn in hand first heading to Elysian Hold. He nearly killed the Archon to extract her sigil. Anduin then headed to Ardenweld, where he used Kingsmorn to extract the sigil of the Winter Queen from the heart of the forest. Champions of Azeroth brought the sigil of the Primus to Torghast, where the Runecarver was being held. It was revealed that the Runecarver was actually the Primus himself. The Jailer and Anduin showed up, and Anduin used Kingsmorn to steal the sigil of the Primus. Anduin and the Jailer then headed to Xerath Mortis, where he used King's Morn to dominate an oracle who opened a way for them to reach the Sepulchre of the First Ones. Mm. Some mall walking champions of Azeroth pursued Anduin ha. and the Jailer to the Sepulchre champions. and confronted Anduin. After a hard fought battle, Anduin plunged King's Morn into the ground at the whim of the Jailer, and the sword began draining Anduin's soul. The previous wielders of Chalamain, yep. Varian and Varrock, appeared to Anduin and encouraged him to fight against the domination magic. In the end, was Anduin sick. was able to split Kingsmorn into the two original Night Elven blades, ah. which released Arthas's soul and freed Anduin from the Jailer's influence. As far as we know, Anduin is still in possession of Chalamain. That was epic. Chalamain is sure to be part of many epic moments in the future, but we'll just have to wait to find out. Hey, if listen, you we saw this it. Video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And let me know if there's any other weapons you'd like to know more about. I love talking with other people who love this game. So come check me out on Twitch if you want to chat. Thanks for watching. Yeah, check him out. You guys want to chat lore? He's got the he's got the weapon lore on lockdown. Shout out to him. Eridic Gaming. Um, that was awesome. That was awesome. I really like the uh the scene. I, I know it's a, a lot of people have mixed feelings on that scene, but I really like the scene where uh Sorfang and um and Varian, you know, talk to him and everything. I, I was hype. I was freaking out during that scene, as a lot of you guys know. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it personally. It was very good. Um, concise and on point. Yeah, that was really concise. I'm impressed, man. You could make that video into 40 minutes, and it was four minutes. Shout out to Erratic Gaming. <laughs> that was awesome. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have actually knew a lot more about the second half of that than the first half. You guys have like told me in chat like the lore, but it was really cool to kind of see that um, with some some key visuals that that he edited in there. So that was awesome. Um, the two variants stuff, really interesting. Some cool lore points there. Yeah, very well done. Concise indeed. Yeah, very good. Night of sarcasm. Yeah, shout out again. That was actually Azure Wing. That was Azure Wings. I think second pick as we're making our way through everybody's seconds. Um, very, very exciting. We have some new dragoons tonight too, who will be looking at their first. So very, very good stuff. So they reduced WoW's villain to a mode of light. Yeah, a lot of people didn't like the Arthas. And we were talking about that earlier, Athena, right? It's like, um, what would have been better if Arthas had, like, you know, stuck around until now and was always in it? I feel like some people might have been like, ah, get rid of him, man. He's been around too long. Um, they're just using him as, like, a cash cow and everything. So I don't know. It's it's tough. It's kind of cool that he went out when he was such a beast. But at the same time, they definitely could have kept him around a little bit longer. All the good stuff from Shadowlands was hidden from all the bad stuff, really. Heading out. All right, Sora. Have a great night. Yeah. Very, very fun. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sora. <laughs> that was epic. But yeah, you guys are the best. Um, I hope you have a lovely, lovely evening. I am going to end in just a moment. We made it through, what was that, four or five um, viewer choice tonight. 
which I very much enjoyed. Thank you all for being here, and I hope you have a lovely evening. We'll be doing more viewer choice. Uh, next up is going to be Warcraft playing, so I'm excited to do more of that with you guys. I had a brainstorm session today with some of the Philidari and Discord, so make sure to hop in there if you're not in there already. I'm talking about the game and uh, and some ideas to get the community involved. And we got some pretty cool ideas to make sort of the gameplay of Warcraft really exciting because obviously a lot of you guys watch me for my cinematic analysis as we're doing tonight, especially on YouTube, right? So we are um, trying to figure out how to make the game as exciting as possible for people, especially because I'm a noob. So thank you so much, everybody. Where did that happen? Uh, yeah, it's in the Discord, in the Philidari chat. Definitely take a read through. Please uh, weigh in if you guys have ideas as well. Would love to hear about it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, everybody. Athena, Jasmine, Jerry. Mayamura. All pure legends. Pure legends. Yeah. Thank you, friends. But yeah, have a good night. Hop in Discord if you haven't and join the conversation. We'll be figuring out what happens next with Warcraft game. Leveling up people through Legion. It's going to be really fun. Thank you, Campfire. Th thank you to all of our mods as well for helping out. You are all the very best. It was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. We'll do more viewer choice soon. I'm going to make it through that second tier list. And I want to try and do these more often. Just chill nights like this. This was fun. Very fun, friends. All right, guys. Have a lovely night. I'll catch you next time.